Hey guys, let me adjust my phone. <sighs> How are you doing? It has been one hell of a week for me. Like, awful week. I'm, I don't know when I've had a worse week. It's been that bad. Uh, I'm so glad it's almost the weekend. Hey, Christy. I was just saying, it's it's been a pretty awful week. Um, I, but I'm glad it's almost the weekend. It's Thursday. It's almost Friday. And my birthday is this weekend, so hopefully I will have some fun. I know that the guys have something planned for me, but I don't know what it is, so I'm excited about that. And I have no idea why I have a fleck on my face. So tonight, I thought we would do a rainbow eye since it is Pride Month. Thanks, it will. Um, on Monday, I had to put my pug Max to sleep, and that was pretty fucking awful. Just, oh, sorry. That was terrible. It was... Uh, it was heart-wrenching. And that basically kind of just set the tone for the whole week, where... I don't know, I just randomly start crying because it's weird and... <laughs> hey Brooke, it's been a weird week. So anyway, yeah, I thought we would do fun stuff, do a rainbow eye. I've got a bunch of like Urban Decay eyeshadows and um, the Tenet palette and then probably Pastel Goth that I'm going to use to create a rainbow eye. Hi Emma. I think it will be better soon. It's just, I don't know, even like when your dog is old and you think, oh, he's doing really badly, it's still really hard to be like, okay, we need to do, we need to put him down. It's it's that time because it's just, ugh, it's so sad. But Phaedra's doing fine, although she's a little mopey. Do you want to say hi, baby? Come here. Come here. She's like, no, you can just look at me. Look at me in all my majesty, laying here staring at you. I look so regal. Um, I guess I will go ahead and start with my primer. I'm going to put on the Tarte primer. This is Tarte Lid Lock and Buff. It's supposed to be a neutral primer, but I feel like it's slightly warm on my skin tone. But regardless of which, I've been liking it. I need to do an all-day wear test because I think it actually manages to last on my lids without creasing. And it's a vegan primer, so if that's the case, this might be the perfect vegan primer I've been trying to find for the past two years. Because people always ask me for vegan primer recommendations, and all the other vegan primers I've tried have melted off of my eyes. It's like my eyes are just oily, oily kryptonite for eyeshadow, or for vegan primers. But this has like a bit of a tint to it, so it kind of blends in with my skin tone, I feel like. Yay! I'm so happy to hear it. I love these dresses. They had like some sort of um, 48 hour sale going on. Like, I, I saw it on, um, I saw it last night and I must have just seen the end of it because I was, it, they were having like some sort of buy two get one free sale on Amazon and I was like, <gasps> and then I was like, no, I shouldn't buy anything and then. This, today I went ahead and bought it because I was like, I, I need more dresses because I have been living in these dresses. They're so comfortable here in Florida because, you know, it's so freaking hot and humid and gross out. Yeah, this primer is great. Or at least I feel like it's great. I just need to do one of those tests where I take pictures of it every every couple hours just to see how it lasts. Yes, I'm always so slow when I put my primer on. I got this brush and it's a Sigma brush. It is the Baked Precision brush and it's actually really good for using around the eyes because I feel like it gives me a lot of control and it blends out the primer so it's not like, it makes it like a nice thin layer rather than a thick layer, which is really nice. I also feel like it kind of dries down, so I don't necessarily need to set it because it doesn't stick. Oh, it looks white on you? 
Yeah, on me, I feel like it kind of blends in with my skin tone and brightens my eyes a little bit. All right. I'm going to start with this bright yellow from the Kat Von D Pastel Goth Palette because it's actually the best yellow that I have. I've got like sugar pills yellow, but it looks like crap on me. It always goes dark. This one doesn't. So I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to put it like the inner part of my crease. And I'm just kind of wiggling the brush back and forth and I'm going to try and make little circles with the brush. And this is a Sigma E25. Thank you. Um, I got the hair done last Thursday and then had to get my roots touched up on Tuesday and get a trim. Hey Kaylee. We are just putting together a rainbow eye. I'm using Kat Von D Pastel Goth Star because it's the best yellow that I own. And I, I own a couple of yellow, but I don't like most of my yellows. This one I like. Oh wow, you're lucky you tan, Brooke. I just burn. Hey Leticia, hey Cassandra. I'm just applying yellow to the um, inner crease area and I'm using a Sigma E25 and I'm basically kind of going back and forth and then I'm going to go in little circles just to sort of blend it out. I don't know if you can see it on the camera, I hope you can, but like this yellow just stays nice and light and bright and it doesn't get like dark and weird looking. I feel like my um, sugar pill yellow, which is called butter, butter cupcake, just gets weird and dark and yellow on me. Like, it ends up looking like clumpy or something. I don't know. All right, I think that's good for the yellow. So I'm going to move on to my orange. Where's my orange? All right. The orange I'm going to use is one of the Urban Decay singles. It's called Spike. I was so, so happy when Urban Decay came out with, um, like, their orange and red singles because they're just, they're nice and they're bright and they're fun to play with. Let's see what brush is going to be good for this. We'll try this one. And I figured what better way to use bright than for some sort of a uh, pride, pride look. I'm going to go back and blend the edges in a second. And this is a tapered blending brush for, that I'm using to apply the orange. But then I'm going to go back with the E25 to do little circles where the colors meet just to try to blend the colors a little. And one trick I recently learned if you're having trouble getting the edges of colors to blend is to use an eyeshadow that's slightly shimmery. Um, on top of the color that you're having trouble blending. So like if I couldn't get the edges here to blend, I would look for like an orange or a yellow shimmery color to just kind of put it down that stripe, uh, down where the colors meet. Because if you use like a, I guess a tonal color, like a, either like a yellow on yellow or a yellow on, or a brown on brown or whatever, it sort of creates the illusion of blending. That's why shimmery colors are easier to blend because they have like that illusion going on. Hi, Crystal. Um, a good set of brushes that's fairly inexpensive. I, I love Sigma. I don't feel like they're that expensive. They have sales all the time. They have sales codes all the time. Um, I want to say my friend Roxy has a code for it. I know that the big YouTuber Stephanie Lange has a code for Sigma. Um, if you want less expensive than that, I would say Real Techniques or um, Eco Tools. Both of those you can find at Ulta. I'm going to hit my red next. For my red, I'm going to use Urban Decay's Relish, which is this fabulous matte red right here. And I think, um, I don't know. Hold, please. i got to go grab a microfiber cloth. One second, baby.
Where's your piggy? Where's your piggy? Come on. Good girl. Yeah. I know. So whenever I'm like doing a look like this where I'm going to be blending back and forth, I like to use microfiber cloths just to clean my brush off in between. I also have one of those color switches, but this seems to do a really good job of grabbing the, um, the leftover shadow that's on the brush. All right, going back with this red, which is relish. And yeah, I can definitely see why you're getting the candy corn vibes because the yellow and the orange. I kind of patted that on and then I'm going back in little circles. So I have Wayne Goss brushes, but I bought them under the impression that they were cruelty free and now I don't feel like they are, so I feel dirty that I own them. <laughs> but they are definitely excellent quality brushes. In my opinion, they're very, I feel like they're very high quality. I have a couple of his brushes that I use because I can't find any other brushes that are the same shape. Hi Carrie. Hi Erica. Hi Pam. Yeah, see, I'm already feeling better from playing with makeup. I'm patting my brush on the orange just to add a little bit more here. So we're definitely having like the color gradient rather than just the yellow to red. Because my orange kind of blended away a little bit. There. Definitely can do, see that. All right. Now I need to get the bottom. So we need some blue and green. All right. I need some purple. I think I'm going to do purple like right here and then have like blue and green going on here. Maybe that's what I'll do. All right. I'm going to use the bright blue and the lime green that are from the Tenet palette. Thanks, Carrie. And I'm just going to use a smudge brush and going to use the green first. And basically just doing it at the inner lower lid. That counts for green, right? Even though it's neon green. I love like the pretty shimmer in it too. This is almost like an acid green. I like it when it's nice and bright like this. All right, I'm gonna wipe off this brush and then I'm gonna go back in with that blue. This is probably the best teal blue that I think Urban Decay has made. They have a lot, but this one's my favorite. Don't worry about the weird gap. I'm going to join it up with some purple. And you know what would be really, really good? Somewhere in here, I got to have a shimmery. Where is it at? Oh, yeah. Is that it? All right. So Urban Decay has Moon Dust eyeshadows, which I love, and I'm going to try taking this color right here, which is cosmic, and it's kind of iridescent, and I'm going to put it on the blue to sort of make the blue shimmery, because I feel like it's kind of an abrupt transition from the shimmery green to the matte blue. So I'm going to work some of this sparkle in here. Yeah, I'm feeling better about that. So this is Cosmic. All right, I'm gonna go back with a little bit more of that green. So a couple weeks ago, I got this Bella Beat, which is a fitness tracker because I used to have the um, 
Fitbit Charge HR and that thing kept giving me a rash like no matter how I wore it I put a cover on it I would break out in a rash from like whatever the thing was that tracked your your heart the heart, heart, the heart monitoring and stuff so I kind of gave up on it and stopped wearing it and my husband was like nagging me he's like it'll help you get better with the gym and everything if you have something like that so I finally picked this thing up and got to use it for the first time at the gym and it wasn't bad um, it doesn't do heart monitoring it does like it does your stress levels, it does your period, it does your fertility, it does your steps. So it does a lot of other stuff, but um, it's actually comfortable to wear. It hasn't caused me to break out yet, so I'm kind of liking it. I'm still testing it out. At some point, I'm probably going to write a review on it. All right, so let's see. What have we got next? We need purple. We've got a lot of purple going on, so let's see what... What purple do we want? Urban Decay has a lot of purples. I think we're going to try this one right here, which is Vice. <sighs> Knocking shit over. Let's see. You were asking about the Goss brushes. I actually have one of the Goss brushes here that I love to use just because it's really good for hooded eyes for adding like an accent color. So this is the Goss 20 brush. And I'm gonna look straight forward into the mirror with my hooded eyes and start working this kind of at the outer corner and blending it in. Probably going to cover up some of the red and have to go back over the red. Ah, uh, you may just need to practice doing like um, one eyeshadow looks to get better at it because that's basically all I do is practice, seriously. Um, so one of the things I'm going to do is shove this brush like here into the hood of my eye. I don't know if you can see that. And work this color back and forth. And then kind of blend it down onto the lid. I still don't know what we're going to put on the lid because we got to put something on the lid. Probably something sparkly. You want to do my makeup? makeup? I would love that, Kaylee. Anytime you want. I am, I am down. Let me go back with a blending brush. Hi, Ivy. I'm playing with rainbow colors because they make me happy. All right, I'm just doing like kind of tiny, tiny, tiny little circles trying to blend this purple in with the red. And it actually blended in pretty well. Yeah, this, this brush from Wayne Goss is really, really nice for, I, I think, for hooded eyes, for giving you control. Ooh, and I think I'm glad I chose a slightly shimmery purple because it's so much easier to blend than a matte. Like I was mentioning earlier, when you have problems with colors blending, just choose a slightly shimmery shade to put on top of it. Apparently it works. <laughs> Hold it in one place and spin it. You can actually see the skin from my hooded eye moving when I do that. <laughs> That's the only reason I think my hooded eyes irritate me is because I feel like my I feel like the skin up here is just it moves too much. I guess it's also because, you know, I'm going to be 39 in like a couple days, so It didn't hurt, I promise. The gauss brushes are really soft. And with this brush, I'm just trying to soften it. Yeah, this purple like blends out like a dream. I don't know, people complain about Urban Decay colors and I'm just like, these colors seem to work pretty well. Um, I need to do something to soften this when I think what I'm gonna do 
is go back to the Pastel Goth palette. Well, I don't know. Hold on. Let me think. Actually, I learned a trick from a YouTuber where you basically take a bronzer and use that to, as your transition. So I'm going to take a small brush and use the Muramura Butter Bronzer, which smells delicious. It smells like a tropical vacation. And soften that line up here. This is a Goss, or not a Goss, sorry. This is a Sigma E36 brush, which I love. This is another brush that's great for sticking into the hood of my eyes. I'm basically going at the edges of this color to try and soften it. Oh, thank you. I, uh, I use a lot of moisturizer and stay out of the sun because I burn like crazy. I, Ivy, your foolproof technique is using bronzer. I wish I had learned this sooner. It's a great trick. It just, it softens everything and makes it look so much better. Can you guys see how that's just softening and blending the edge out? I'm probably going to have to go back and add a little bit more red because I feel like that kind of got overpowered by the purple. And I'm definitely going to have to clean up over here. <laughs> one eye always looks really good. One eye kind of looks like I went to Walmart. <laughs> Yeah, the bronzer thing is a really great trick. Especially when it's like, I feel like this is more of a neutral bronzer than a totally warm bronzer. It's it's not too too warm on, on my skin tone. So I'm just using this teeny tiny little brush to blend at the edges of my color so that it just you know, looks better and it's not just like, hello, bright chunks of color on my eye. All right, I'm gonna grab something. Actually, I should wait to clean up the fallout until I put a lid color on. I'm thinking the lid needs to be something super sparkly. So how do we feel about solstice? Or should I put down the pink first and then put solstice on top? Because I'm thinking if I put the pink down first, then put solstice on top of that glitter, it's gonna be amazing. Or I can try and look for another glittery shade. Let me see. Ooh, you know what? I think I think I want to use this one. This one is called Crux. And I'm going to use it damp. So anytime I'm gonna put like a color on and use it damp, what I like to do is just grab a setting spray of any any sort and I put the color on the brush and then spritz it and this is the Milani make it dewy spray this stuff is awesome for dry skin let's see what this look oh yeah um, I'm in love with this color holy crap I love the moon dusts and then I forget that I have them for a while and I don't play with them and then all of a sudden I'm like oh right I have them in my collection why am I not using them Yeah, this is like an amazing multi-dimensional color that looks so good. And I'm trying to just put it on my mobile lid, but you know, I have hooded eyes, so it may transfer just because that's how my eyes are. One thing I love about the moon dust is they don't irritate um, my eyes. Some glitters like really bother my eyes, but these just... I think because of however they're formulated, they don't irritate them. I've never had them get stuck in like my tear duct or anything. I had that happen with a pro product from Stilo like years and years ago. It caused my eyes to get really irritated. Alright. Yeah, Crux is an amazing color. And I feel like you never hear bloggers talking about the moon dusts. Yay, I'm glad you like it. I think I'm going to have to go back and 
hit the red again and maybe a little bit of the yellow. Actually, all right, I'm gonna take a big floofy brush, which is here somewhere, somewhere in my stash. Where's my big floofy brush? All these palettes are all over the place and I'm trying not to gouge any eyeshadows. Here. Clean this off in my little microfiber thing. I'm absolutely going to do face makeup. I'm going to do a whole look. And um, I've been testing out the Ordinary Serum Foundation with the Ordinary Primer and setting it, like completely setting it, and that seems to work really well. So I want to put that on and show you what it looks like. See, I'm telling you, this side looks a little like it. This side needs a little help. <laughs> um, I need to go back to that palette and... Really? Why is this not sticking? There we go. I tried to put the lid on incorrectly and it was just like, nope, that's not going to work. Not going to work for me. All right. I'm going to go back with the red to just... And a tiny bit more red up here and I'm barely touching my brush <sighs> this needs a little bit more orange so I hated the foundation at first because it like slid off my face and then I tried it with the ordinary's primer and I was like, whoa, this is actually pretty good. I, I keep wanting to do a wear test where I do like the, the filament and then I see how it wears throughout the day. But you know, this week just, it was not gonna happen this week. I wanted it to just, with everything that happened with Max, it was just not gonna happen. So hopefully I can do it next week or tomorrow, just sometime soon, cause I thought about doing it this week and it just wasn't happening. Oh yay, cause, so basically I've got like this deep like denim blue in the front and then in the middle section it's a deep almost royal blue with a violet undertone and then in the back I've got like a deep teal and then I have a black layer underneath cause I wanted to change my hair and I was like blue, 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 let's go play with all the blues. So I'm really, really happy with it. And I had my roots darkened so that when it grows back in, it'll like mesh with my normal dark hair. Oh yeah, I knew you meant I knew you meant like an oil slick like colors, not like my hair needed to be washed. <laughs> All right, I need a little bit more of this yellow, man. What are you guys thinking of this? Does it feel like pride? Now I can clean up the fallout underneath my eyes. So to clean up fallout, usually all I do is just take something like this and either some micellar water or some makeup remover. This is a Paula's Choice makeup remover. And using something like this, if you want to like get an edge, this is perfect. Yay! Happy to hear it. Um, I need to grab some liner. So if I'm not using the Kat Von D liner because of my lashes and trying to preserve them, what I like to use is the NYX Epic Ink Liner. It's basically a dupe for the Kat Von D, only it comes off easier. So it'll it'll wear for me pretty well and won't like transfer, but I, what I mean is I don't have to scrub to get it off like I do the Kat Von D. Yay! Thank you, Ivy. And it's good for you to clean your brushes. That's awesome. So yeah, I'm just going to take this NYX liner and line the upper lash line just to give me a little bit of definition 
It did help my Walmart eye for sure. So I'm kind of torn about my lash extensions because I love having them and I love not having to wear mascara, especially when my allergies are bad because mascara will just like come off in my eyes, which is gross. But I'm kind of annoyed sometimes at the upkeep and I feel like I should stop them again for a while. But my ability to put on mascara is like this. It's not something I've ever mastered. So I don't know what I'm going to do. If I'm going to keep getting my lashes or not. I basically need a mascara that will do all of the work for me. I love the tip on this brush, by the way. Yeah, that just helps with the line, line a little bit. Um, all right, so I'm going to put on the Ordinary Foundation Primer. This is their High Spreadability Fluid Primer. Now, if you're not familiar with the Ordinary, they're an interesting brand. They're cruelty-free. They've got like three different levels of products. So like they have their really inexpensive line that has high quality ingredients. And then they have like their medium line and then they have like their luxe line. And they released primer, or, or, sorry, they, were, they released foundations that basically broke the internet because they're completely sold out. I don't even know how long the waiting list is to get the foundation. But the primer was available, so I decided I was going to buy the primer to try it. And like most of their stuff is like six to nine dollars. Yay, thank you. And their primer is kind of. It kind of looks like um, hyaluronic acid if you ever have had like a hyal hyaluronic acid booster. Um, and you just kind of spread it on. And this one is for dry skin, so it's supposed to help moisturize your skin. And my skin is clean and hydrated. Basically, um, about 20 minutes before I logged on here, I took a shower because I was at the gym before that and moisturized my skin and I use the Ren Ever Calm stuff for rosacea so my skin isn't terribly red but usually after I work out at the gym it kind of looks a little pinkish so yeah this is supposed to like help hydrate and make everything smooth and perfected for foundation um, I'm going to use my fingers to apply the foundation, but I'm still wanna, gonna wanna go back over it with a beauty blender. So hold please while I get this wet. Baby, just like, can't you make up your mind and just keep keep on with the makeups? Yeah, so I I think I really like the primer because it goes on very smoothly. And if as you saw, I didn't really put that much on. So the foundation I'm going to put on is the serum foundation, and the shade is One in S, which is like neutral silver. I feel like it's a little bit dark on its own for me, so I really need to mix white in. However, I'm feeling lazy and you won't I don't think you'll be able to see on camera that it's a little dark, so I'm just going to put it on as it is. But I like squirt it into my hands and then I'm basically just going to start it at the center of my face. Cuz that's where most of my redness is. And I think that's probably the case for most people. If you have any facial redness, it's probably at the center of your face. Oh, thank you. I have rosacea, but I've been trying so hard to make my skin happy rather than angry. For a while, I was 
um, using chemical exfoliants, but I was using them too frequently, and so my skin freaked out. And then I think a while ago, like um, just at the beginning of May, I was diagnosed with uh, cerberic dermatitis. I think that's what it, it's called. So like there are some places on my face that I was over exfoliating to try and get rid of dry patches and the dry patches weren't going away. And I was like, what's happening? Why is this going on? What do I need to do to fix it? And my dermatologist was like, um... You can't really fix that because, or rather, she gave me medication, but she's like, you can't fix that with exfoliation. That's just not going to work. Yay, I'm glad you like it. I feel like the color's pretty close. It's just a little dark. And honestly, I feel like it's, I feel like under studio lights, you don't really see that it's so dark, but I feel like I can see it. Because I like to match my foundation to my neck here so that I kind of look uniform from the chest up. I need just a tiny little bit more um, around my forehead, like around here, but I always feel awkward trying to do around my brows with my fingers. I feel like I could do a much better job with a brush. Ah, I got my brow. It's okay. I can fix it with a pencil later. Yeah, I feel like with my studio lights on, it looks like an exact match. And one of the things I haven't done is I haven't seen if it oxidizes on me at all because some foundations oxidize. Like if, you, if you've ever worn, worn Urban Decay's foundations, you'll know foundations oxidize sometimes badly. <laughs> so, but what I really like about this foundation is how it blends into your skin and it looks pretty much seamless. Like my skin doesn't look perfect, but it looks really good to me. Like, you can still see that zit that I've had, like, for over a month that hasn't faded. I feel, I feel like it looks very natural. Now, what I've noticed with this is I have to set this, because otherwise it's gone in less than two hours. And this is why I want to do the test, is to see how long it lasts. So I'm going to set, set this with the Milani Prep Set Glow Illuminating Translucent Powder. I love this. This stuff is awesome. And I'm going to use my big ass tart brush. Uh, this is like, it's, I bought it from Ulta. It's like tart air, air buff something blurring brush, but it's a foundation brush and it's just super luxurious and thick. And oh my God, I'm so glad I splurged on it because it's amazing. And I just, I run my brush across this and then run it all over my face gently to set the foundation. Which, by the way, I think this is an awesome setting powder. I don't feel like um, it gives you like full on disco ball effect either, even though it says it's illuminating. I feel like it just kind of helps you to have a nice sheen. It does have a super long name, um, Kaylee. That's why I can't remember it. I really hate when, when companies give products super really long names because I'm like, I'm never going to remember this ever. I'm just going to give up now because I'm not going to remember. Where is my nose ring? Um, I've been using my Wonder Brow product on my brows, but I'm feeling a little lazy, so I'm going to use a pencil just to fill in a couple gaps rather than redo all of my brows again. Um, so I think finishing powders and setting powders are actually two different things, though, though people do often use them the same. Um, setting powder is supposed to set your makeup, and a finishing powder I think is supposed to give you like a nice glow. But I feel like companies make it really confusing to know which is which. This is the ColourPop Jet, uh, Jet Set Black pencil. And all I'm trying to do is just fix up my brows a little bit. I'm probably going to have to go in with a pointy Q-tip to fix up like the edges where it looks like after three days it's ran a little bit. Because the Wonder Brow product lasts for like three days. It lasts through the gym and it lasts through showers. But I think that since this is day three, it's just 
it's feeling a little sad. Let me grab a pointy Q-tip. By the way, if you are ever in a pinch, pointy Q-tips or regular Q-tips can be used to blend. When I tell people this, they're like, are you kidding? And I'm like, nope, it actually works. But I will often use them to like clean up around my brows. Ah. I may need to go back in with a little bit more foundation there, but. Yeah. Um, what color blush are you guys thinking for this? Like nude? Because I kind of feel like with all the bright colors on the eyes, it probably needs to be a little softer. See, I just can't get... Uh, my left eye is like my Walmart eye. It just doesn't ever want to look nice right now. My lashes look crappy. And I had them filled not that long ago, so it's not like, you know, it's towards the end. What am I going to do on the lips? I think I should do something bright on the lips, but I'm not sure what. I kind of feel like a red would be really good on the lips. Hi, Pita! Alright, so... I think I'm going to start with... This is um, Glamour Doll Eyes Skeletina, and it's kind of like a grayish contour shade. I'm not exactly going to contour, but I'm going to kind of use it as like a bottom blush shade. Yeah, I will definitely do red lips. I've been feeling red anyways. I did um, red on Instagram recently, and everybody went crazy over it. This is basically a very cool tone gray color with a slight orange shift. So it's kind of a contour, but kind of not, kind of a blush color. See, it'll give like a little bit of definition. Red purple ombre for the lips. I can try. I can probably do like a purple pencil and then red and then try to blend it. I have like the little, um, where are they at? have like these little like these things seem to be great for blend blending lipstick all right so I got that on let me grab I need a new blush where's my new blush I'm hanging out this is a gallony blush and the color is called au natural so let me find a brush to put it on and I will then make my cheeks have the nude blush. I'm a different brush. This is one of the Real Techniques brushes. Yep, she's sleeping behind me. She's just chilling out. Oh my god, this pan is like not wanting to give me any blush. I'm like, it was fine before, now it's just like, nope, not going to give you color. Thank you. She's a standard poodle. She's my baby. Even she's feeling a little bit down this week. This is probably my favorite nude blush because I feel like it's just like the perfect the perfect hint of whatever color this is that doesn't want to come out like I'm like digging at the pan it's just like nope all right 
So the other reason this brush is awesome is because if I go over this lightly, it just somehow blends it in beautifully. And then my blush actually looks like it's supposed to rather than me going, I look like a hot reject mess. So um, the blush is Galony en Natural. So I need to highlight. Of course, I'm going to put on my Makeup Geek Celestial Highlighter, which is my favorite highlighter. With my Unicorn Brush from Wet n Wild. Taking the big brush again to just kind of blend and soften. I love, love, love this guy. Hi, Jan. Hi, Corinne. Yay, blue hair. All about that blue hair. <laughs> uh, I'm going to highlight under the brows with the Makeup Geek Celestial, my favorite highlighter. And this is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Brush, which is always my favorite for highlighting just because it has like the pointy end. It makes it easy for me to get under my brows. With hooded eyes, you don't really want to go all the way. Like some people will go all the way across with your highlight, and I don't do that because it just doesn't look good on me. Uh, where's that little tiny brush I had again? So the brush that has a little bit of that bronzer left on it, I'm just going to use to soften the edges. I usually go live at 8.30 p.m. Eastern um, and poise chat. Uh, the eye makeup's from this stream, so I, I've been putting this whole look together um, uh, during the stream as I'm stuttering. Because <laughs> I wanted to put together a pretty pride look for Pride Month. All right. And I'm just using the tip of my Beauty Blender to blend the edges a little bit. Alright, so I personally feel like this foundation makes my skin look really good, but um, because I had to set it with the powder all over, I feel like I need to spray it, so I'm going to spray it with that Milani Make It Dewy spray. I don't know why, but these two products from, from Milani I think are amazing. Now for lips. Um, let me find a purple lip pencil and see if I can possibly do some sort of an ombre. Although, not going to lie, I think I suck at ombre lips, so we'll see how it turns out. Okay, so this is Kat Von D Roxy Pencil. And I think what I'm going to do is just color like the outer parts of my, like I'm going to line my lips, actually, I'm going to line my lips in red in the center and then do purple on the outside and then color on the purple and then put the red lipstick on top to make it a little easier to blend. So I'm going to use uh, the Outlaw pencil first. I guess I'll just fill this in. I should have exfoliated my lips. Oh, 
Oh, I hope you guys aren't frozen. Can you guys hear me? All right, I'm gonna go in with the purple now. Ooh, so glad. So I don't know if this is the best way to do this, but this is how I'm going to try and do it and see if it works. The red I'm going to use is NYX Lucy, which is from their pinup line. And this is a killer red in my opinion. All right, kind of maybe halfway there, so I'm gonna start blending. But this is like a little sponge. That lipstick is um, NYX Lucy, and it's from their pinup line. I think it's amazing. It's like a fabulous red. I'm wearing it on my two most recent Instagram photos. So basically this little thing I think makes it easier to blend. What do you think? Like I'm not really good at this whole ombre lip thing, but you can see a little bit of purple. I guess I can go back with the pencil and try to try to make it a little bit more obvious. My friend Mickey is way better at this whole ombre lip thing than I am. I still feel like up here when I when I said ombre, like my lips got messed up with the liner and I'm trying to figure out how to fix it. It's like this one point on my lip that is sticking and I don't know why. No! Okay, not gonna panic. This is Cover Effects Perfect Pencil and I'm gonna use it to fix whatever that was when I tried to fix the other error. Nope, still not working. Uh... Q-tip. <sighs> I 
Usually at this point I say screw it, take off my lips and redo them. But I feel like I have the ombre almost working so I don't want to undo everything I just did. So I'm slightly overdrawing my lips. I don't normally do this. Does that look better? I'm trying to fix where there's, there's the mistake and it still looks funny to me. Ugh. You know what actually will help? Let's see. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of foundation on an angled eyeshadow brush and see if I can fix it like that. It's just like one spot. All right, I think that's fixed. Now I just need to wait for the foundation to dry so I don't look like I have like half a mustache of light on. Cause that's what it looks like right now. Yay. Well, that matches a little bit better, but I'm still going to blend this out. You guys can't see it. I can see it. I feel like it looks like I have on a white mustache. <laughs> so basically, I made it match, and I'm just taking a Q-tip trying to blend at it. All right, this is why I don't do ombre lips, but it's kind of there. Hey, Eugenia. All right, my attempt at ombre lips is there. Let's see, I think, I think I might need a little bit more blush. Other than that, I think this look is almost done. I did a pride look for Pride Month. Rainbow eyes and all. Wow, like, so this brush didn't, or this blush didn't look like it had any sort of hard surface on it, but after I ran my brush across it, all of a sudden it looks like it basically picked up a bunch of oils. How annoying. So I'm taking a tissue to basically try to clean that off. If you ever see this with your eyeshadow or your blush or anything and it's a powder product, you can taste, basically just take a tissue to like rub it off and fix it. So it's really subtle ombre. I basically did purple at the outer corners and then red in the center. So I it's not it's not very bold. The other thing this is good for is taking off the like powdery effect from having set my makeup all over and then using powder blush. Yeah, it's not it's not very bold as far as like um, ombre. I know most people do a much better job than I do, but this was what I could come up with. So here we go with my pride look. I actually love the eyes. I think the eyes look awesome. I feel like my skin looks pretty good. My lips. My lips look a little sad, <laughs> so I kept trying to fix them and then ended, ended up overdrawing, so I don't really, my lips are not my favorite. But the eyeshadow, man, the eyeshadow I'm feeling. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and chatting and stuff. It was really nice. It's been a terrible week, so having something fun that I did, oh god, I got red on my teeth.
Ah! Remember to blot. Hate toothpaste, or I hate getting lipstick on my teeth. Yay, thank you. Thank you guys. Um, I will have some pictures to share of this look soon, so I will see you later.